Thank you, sir, for a very crisp and precise uh, talk. Uh, Periprocedural management becomes very risky, very tricky when dealing with patients that are at a higher bleeding risk. And to talk about post-PCI antiplatelet therapy and anticoagulant management with a focus on high bleeding risk patients, I will now invite our next speaker, Professor Muzaffar Ali, who is a professor of cardiology at Punjab Institute of Cardiology. Thank you very much, Dr. Noor, for giving me the opportunity. So today I'm going to present uh, post-PCI antiplatelet therapy and anticoagulant management. Focus will be on high bleeding risk. Remember, guidelines are a good document, no doubt, but certainly it is not the law of land because every patient is different and it is the physician judgment which matters the most. So what do the uh, guidelines suggest? Uh, aspirin, regarding the aspirin, it should be 81 to 325 before PCI if a patient is on already on the aspirin and if he is not taking the aspirin, 325 milligrams should be the dose. And post-PCI, it should be 81 milligram in preference to high maintain maintenance dose. So what should be the duration of therapy? It should uh, be uh, depend upon the what is the condition of the patient. If the patient comes with the acute coronary syndrome and have PCI, 12 month is the class one indication. And uh, similarly, for the stable angina post-PCI, six months should be the uh, minimum duration for the DAPT. But there are certain patients who have, uh, are at uh, increased uh, uh, high risk for bleeding, then you can discontinue aspirin after one to three months and continue with P2Y2 inhibitor uh, uh, for the, both in ACS and post-PCI. So what is about the cabbage, post-cabbage patient initiate aspirin 100 to 325 milligram within six hour post-op and uh, uh, patient uh, with the depth therapy post uh, post cabbage there is no role at all. So what about the loading dose patient undergoing PCI uh, with by the acute coronary stroma? Uh, there, there is different doses like the 300 milligram protocol should be given. Similarly, 60 milligram presbyterol and 180 milligram ticagrelor. And there is a, if there is uh, for certain reason patient can't take the antiplatelet therapy. There is the agent uh, IV kangaroo road, but it is class 2B indication, not, the role is still not clear. And patients who are with ACS and undergoing PCI, but having large thrombus burden and no reflow or low flow phenomena, as uh, Dr. Javed also mentioned in some cases, intravenous glycoprotein 2B3 inhibitor agents are reasonable to improve the procedural success. So class 2 indication. So what about the anticoagulant uh, therapy recommendation post-PCI? Unfectioned heparin should be given during PCI, but there are certain patients who are uh, actually come, come with heparin reduced thrombocytopenia, we can't give the uh, unfectioned heparin. So here comes the role of bivalidity in agro, uh, 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 argetroban, this is class one indication. So this is a common uh, scenario in our daily practice, uh, surgical people often ask us uh, uh, when to stop the antiplatelet therapy, uh, especially with patients who have ischemic heart disease or post-PCI and is going under the, uh, some sur surgical procedure. So continue aspirin, clopidogrel, ticagrel should be stopped three days before and similarly clopidogrel five days before the surgery and presbyterol seven days before surgery. Uh, you can stop trefoban four hours before and apsiximab 12 hours before the impending surgery. So duration of depth also matter. Uh, there are certain risk factors which are, will lead the patient at increased risk of thrombosis. Certainly patient who presented with the MI or uh, with low ejection fraction and uh, peclitexel stent, so congested fall for failure. The score is more than two, then long duration of depth is favorable. So these are the patients who are at increased uh, ischemic risk, favor the long depth therapy, advanced age, ACS presentation, multiple pro MI, extensive diabetes or uh, CKD patient, similarly the patient with the low ejection fraction and the stent is portal use undersized or complex PCI bifurcation stenting ISR, so may favor the long duration of therapy. So factor which lead uh, with high risk bleeding come uh, like the prior bleeding or oral anticoagulant therapy, female sex advanced age, low, bar, low weight, diabetes. Uh, these may favor the short duration of therapy. Here are some 
actually trial which support the short duration of therapy like global leader to light uh, stop debt to with the uh, low uh, debt for two to uh, one one month or three month and later on we replace with the p2 y2 for 12 month and later on by aspirin followed by aspirin therapy only so what were the conclusion of stop debt and stop acs so clopidogrel monotherapy after one month of dab compared with 12 month of dab with aspirin or clopidogrel had benefit in reducing major bleeding effects without significant increase in cardiovascular events so here come the trade off decision in a patient who have high bleeding risk reduced dab duration one to three months and chance of dab also matter de escalate to less potent antiplatelet and definitely doex or noex instead of warfarin in patient who are going under uh, pci and have Uh, history of atrial fibrillation so these patients should have liberal use of pci and uh, uh, definitely radial assess should be used sheathless uh, preferably sheathless uh, catheter and these patients should have the des which are with thin thin strut like uh, uh, we have ultimaster and resolute onyx synergy so the now come to the patient who have uh, atrial fibrillation and are on a warfarin therapy or uh, noex and are undergoing pcis what should be the duration of therapy so these patient should uh, have triple therapy uh, the standard therapy a patient have no atrial fibrillation should have triple therapy for first week and then for uh, double therapy including noex and single monoplatelet and um, single antiplatelet therapy preferably p2 y2 inhibitor for 6 month and after 6 month uh, for 12 month and then after 12 month uh, no x uh, second group is the patient who are at high risk of bleeding so these patient should be given uh, triple therapy for the first week and then double therapy including no x and p2 y2 inhibitor for 6 uh, 6 month and then no x for remaining 6 month and after 12 month no x and these are the patient who are at ischemic high ischemic risk these should be given triple therapy for uh, one month and then double therapy for 12 month so this a fib uh, patient undergoing pci these are also the 2021 guideline which also supporting the uh, esc guideline so aha document 2021 in patient with atrial fibrillation who are undergoing pci and are ta on take, uh, taking oral anticoagulant therapy it is recommended to discontinue aspirin for after 1 to 4 weeks while maintaining p2 y2 inhibitor in addition to non vitamin k oral anticoagulant rivaroxaban and dabigatran should be preferred over warfarin therapy so in daily practice we come across certain scenario which are really complex uh, pci procedure and the same time patient have uh, at risk of bleeding what should we do what should be antiplatelet therapy of choice in these patient like this patient you presented the, the anterior mi and unfortunately was having hit uh, thrombocytopenia was the uh, bifurcational uh, uh, lesion so initially we uh, was uh, planning the Uh, provisional strategy and these patient should have uh, uh, radial procedure and sheathless guide and uh, uh, avoid the complex procedure go for the uh, uh, single led stenting provisional stenting rather for complex dk crush and in these patient if you have to give the depth so continue depth for at least one month and after one month we can stop the aspirin and you will continue with p2 y2 inhibitor for the remaining 12 months so this is another case uh, is a patient who was a uh, uh, 80 years old female diabetic no present with inferior wall mi and ejection from 45% pca to rc with the uh, focal lesion was done with third generation thin stent stent and she was given triple therapy for one week and then discharged with the regimen of clopidogrel and doex for 6 months and followed by doex only after 12 months so conclusion was said bleeding versus thrombosis trade off decision there are certain tool to quantify the risk of bleeding and ischemia of every patient and appropriate pharmacology and procedural factor to be operate adopted for high bleeding risk thank you very much